Welcome back. This is Africa 360. This week, our focus is on Zimbabwe. Earlier this week, I spoke to Patrick Joao, who is one of the youngest members of ZANU-PF's key decision-making body, the Politburo. He is also a former member of parliament. Joao also happens to be President Robert Mugabe's nephew. He says his uncle and the party are still strong enough to lead Zimbabwe. Patrick Joao, thank you so much for joining us on uh, Africa 360. Thank you very much, Chris, for giving me this opportunity. The, the interesting thing, um, and, I, and I suppose you hear this a lot, is that you are closely associated to President Robert Mugabe, and this is uh, through family. You are his nephew. And I imagine that a, a lot of people tend to approach you uh, from that lens and not necessarily uh, see you as an independent persona. I think the people that uh, don't interact with me want to look at it from that perspective. But the reality of the situation is I've come through the ranks of the party in ZANU PF. I became uh, a member of the district executive in 1995, rose through the ranks through what is called the district coordinating committee, was a member of the provincial executive committee for two terms, got into the central committee of ZANU PF for two terms, and now I move. I'm proud. I'm a member of the Politburo. You seem to be denying furiously that any achievement uh, that you might have uh, enjoyed within the party in your political life can really be attributed to those close familiar links with the head of state of your country, President Robert Mugabe. Um, those that know President Robert Mugabe know that he's a very, very structured man. He works very much on principle. And his favorite saying is that you don't sacrifice principle on the altar of expedience. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And then number two, most critical, is that if the president chose to appoint his relatives, it sends a message to all the other faithful party cadres to say, listen, you, you, are not, you will not be appointed on the basis of your competence. So President Robert Mugabe has been able to lead ZANU-PF for almost 40 years now. And it is because of his fairness. And really, that is the critical aspect. You're also part of um, the organize, organizing or campaign committee within ZANU-PF. You've launched a manifesto. You've had uh, the, the, the launch of that manifesto, uh, by all accounts, quite successful. Can you give us a sense about what ZANU-PF is promising? Because the indictment has been that in the past, the performance from your party has uh, been less uh, than uh, positive. I'll tell you what ZANU-PF is going to be able to deliver after these elections. ZANU-PF is going to be able to deliver the growth of the economy, of Zimbabwe's economy. What we've done over the past uh, 15 years is to set a base for the development and growth of the economy. The economy is first and foremost about people. It is about how to make sure people survive. And what the ZANU-PF government has done is to set, set the appropriate base. We have the best qualified, we've got the best educated population. And that resource is the most human, the human capital is the most important resource for any nation. We have got lots of skilled Zimbabweans, both within Zimbabwe and outside Zimbabwe. Now, what is ZANU-PF's economic strategy? ZANU-PF's economic strategy is to facilitate and enable those economically able Zimbabweans to fully contribute to the economy. It sounds all, 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 all very uh, it, good on it is, paper, it sounds Mr. Joe, but, 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 but here, it here, here's the indictment, though, on your party that, in actual fact, ZANU-PF has presided over the economic decline of what was the breadbasket of Southern Africa, which so, some people now uh, describe as a basket case but let's look, in let, Southern let's, Africa. Let's, let's look at the facts. Let's look at the facts. We have this year managed to produce 156 million kilograms of tobacco. In a government and, of national unity. By empowered black Zimbabweans. We've now got 39... But under, under the now, mantra of a government we've, we've, of national now, unity. Yes, we've now got 39,000 Zimbabweans contributing to that particular economy. And you now, attribute, you attribute I, these I, we, advances simply to, to the land of PF. I attribute the advances to the land reform Others program. Others would argue that this has occurred in spite of the land reform program. Others would also argue it, that it, what is also done is uh, allowed for the economy with, to with, be alienated from with, with, this with, key with, agricultural with, with, sector. With, with all due respect, Chris, you cannot have 39,000 farmers 
growing tobacco unless they're on the land. You had 2,000 white farmers that were growing tobacco previously before the land reform program. Now you've now got 39,000 farmers growing tobacco. It's because they were, had access to land. But how about issues of governance? In the past, people have said that ZANU-PF presided over the narrowing of democratic space, clamping down on civil liberties of uh, Zimbabweans themselves, and more importantly, uh, saw the creation of what was, in actual fact, a very partisan state security uh, force in the police, in the armed forces, the intelligence community of your country. What does ZANU-PF have to say about that. I will, will you liberalize? ZANU-PF presided over the, over the political independence of Zimbabwe. It is ZANU-PF that brought political independence. It is the two parties, ZANU and ZAPU, that worked together, fighting a protracted armed liberation struggle. But very liberate. quickly, but very quickly. Let, let, please allow but, me to but, continue. But very please. quickly, please allow almost me to continue. turned on those values please, please that allow underpin me to continue. the liberation it struggle. Is also, it is also ZANU-PF that created Morgan Shangirai and the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions. So ZANU-PF is actually opened up the space for democracy. In 2008, he lost the first round of those elections. Does he think he'll win this time around? Yes, this time around we will win. The re there are two reasons why we will win this time around. The first reason is that in 2008, we went to the elections as a fragmented party. We got complacent because in 2005, we had a constitutional majority. So people fought and we went to elections divided. Then the second thing, and probably the most important thing, why ZANU-PF will win, is that people this time around are going to vote with their minds. You, you're very close to, to, to President Robert Mugabe. He, he is your uncle. Yes, Bob's my uncle. Bob's your uncle. And, and the interesting thing about it is that he, he, he's old. And there must be a concern, even within the family, um, that there's so much pressure being put on him at this stage to run as the presidential candidate. Does the family think he should do this? We lost uh, Uncle Bob to the nation a long time ago. We lost him in the 60s. He no longer belongs to us as a family. He belongs to the people of Zimbabwe. That brings us to the end of uh, this edition of Africa 360. I hope you enjoyed those key insights into ZANU-PF. If you'd like to leave a comment or join the debate on Africa, do like our Facebook page or tweet us at A360 underscore ENCA or drop us an email on Africa360 at ENCA.com. So until next time, when you look forward to bringing you Africa like you've never seen it before, do take care.